Hello and welcome to ExcelMasterSeries.com. Today we're going to show how to do single factor ANOVA and we're going to compare doing it in Excel and doing it by hand. The ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance. The ANOVA test determines whether three or more different variations of a single factor or treatment have the same effect on a population. An ANOVA tests the null hypothesis for each factor and the null hypothesis for each factor states that varying that factor has no effect on the population. And the end result of ANOVA is to either accept or reject the null hypothesis. And if you reject the null hypothesis, it doesn't automatically mean that you accept the alternate hypothesis that varying the factor has an effect on the population. You need to determine up front the degree of certainty that you're going to require from the ANOVA test. For example, you might wish to require 95% degree of certainty whether or not to accept or reject the null hypothesis. And alpha is derived from the degree of certainty. Alpha equals 1 minus the degree of certainty. For example, if you require 95% degree of certainty, then alpha equals 0.05. As a general rule, the ANOVA test generates a p-value. If that p-value is greater than alpha, you accept the null hypothesis, which states that varying the factor had no effect on the population. If the p-value is less than alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. There are three types of built-in ANOVA in Excel. You have single factor ANOVA that we're going to be doing today, right now, and two factor ANOVA without replication, and two factor ANOVA with replication. So let's take a look at each one of those kinds of ANOVA and see what they are. Single factor ANOVA, you're just varying one factor. You assume everything else is the same, and that one factor has its own null hypothesis stating that varying that factor had no effect on the outcome. Two factor ANOVA without replication, you're just adding another factor into the test. Each of those two factors has its own null hypothesis that varying that factor had no effect on the outcome. And finally, there is two-factor ANOVA with replication. You're just replicating the two-factor ANOVA test in two different locations so you can compare the interaction between the two factors and develop a hypothesis test for that interaction. Now let's take a look at the single-factor ANOVA test that we're going to do right now. We're testing to see whether varying closing methods has an effect on the number of sales. So here we have the test. We have 12 different salespeople divided up into three groups of four salespeople each. And each one of those groups is instructed to use only one closing method exclusively for two weeks. And then we recorded the number of sales that each salesperson made in that group over that two week period. And so here's how the data, here's the outcome of that data. And this is the way you have to list the data on your Excel spreadsheet in order to be able to run this test. So let's run it right now. Test, data analysis, ANOVA two, uh, single factor, okay, and this is Excel 2003 by the way, and the first item on the ANOVA single factor dialog box is the input range, and that would simply be everything that we have highlighted in yellow right here, including the headlines, method one, two, and three, then hit the little square in the dialog box, bring that back up, and we see the data is grouped by columns, the labels are in the first row, methods one, two, and three are the labels, and the alpha is 0.5 because we require a 95% degree of certainty. The output range, well that just selects the cell, that'll be the upper left hand corner of the output. Let's go back into the dialog box, hit OK and run the analysis. That was easy. So let's take a look at that output. There it is. And I'm going to color code the output to make it a little bit easier to read and understand. And we can see the, uh, the most important part of the output is the p-value between the two groups. The groups are methods 1, 2, and 3 closing methods. And the p-value stands for it. it p-value equals 0.014. That means there's about a 1.4% chance that they have that amount of variation between the groups. That's, that's the interpretation of the p-value. And this is, for a single, this is the output for single factor ANOVA in Excel 2003. And we can see that p-value is less than alpha. And the general root, if the p-value is less than alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis. And in this case, we can see that that is true. P-value is 0.44, alpha is 0.5. P-value is a lot less than alpha. So we reject the null hypothesis. And we state that there's probably 95% certainty that varying the closing method uh, did have an effect on the number of sales. So let's take a look at this done by hand. And you'll see how much more difficult it was or is to do by hand. You'll never want to do it by hand. So here's the same problem once again. We have the uh, output all set up just like it was before. So let's go into the manual calculations. A lot of room for error here. Each one of these groups has its own column. And we're adding up the totals in each column. And I'm just 
just going to do this, these calculations for one column. And the column mean, dividing that total by the number 4, the number of items in that column, in this case, 17. And we add up, uh, the, take the average of all those column totals there. And our next item is the column mean minus the gram mean. So that, in this case, 17 minus gram mean of 20. And each one of these columns is done the same way. And then square that number. Minus 3 squared is 9. And then the number of rows times that number, so 9 times 4 rows, 36. And we've done that for each one of those. And we add all of those uh, numbers up. We have 72. So that right there. Let's go on to the next part of this calculation, calculating the sum of square within treatments. Okay, so once again, we're adding up the number of sales in each uh, column. Then we're subtracting, we're taking the uh, mean of that, and then we're subtracting that mean from each one of those numbers. And 16 minus 17 is 1. 21 minus 17 is 4. 18 minus 17 is 1. And 13 minus 17 it should be negative 4 down there, but that doesn't matter because we're going to square each one of those. And we can see we've done that same calculation for each one of those columns. So we're going to square each one of those. So minus 1 squared is 1, 4 squared is 16, 1 squared is 1, and the bottom one should be minus 4, but that squared is 16. Then we add up those squares. add up the squares at the bottom of each column. And in this case, we get the sum of squares within treatments equals 46. And we see there's lots of room for error here. Now we have to calculate the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom within groups equals number of columns minus 1. C minus 1. 3 columns minus 1 is 2. And degrees of freedom within groups equals number of columns times the quantity of number of rows minus 1. That's 3 times quantity of 4 minus 1, 9. Total degrees of freedom of 11. So now we're calculating sum of squares. Bring those numbers down that we just calculated. Between groups, sum of squares, and within groups, sum of squares. Total sum of squares is equal to 118. Then we're calculating the mean square. We take the sum of squares and divide it by the degrees of freedom specific to that. So we can see right here the mean squares. And the F statistic, that is simply mean square divided by mean square. And that gives you an F statistic of 7.0434. And that is compared to the F critical value. If the F statistic is greater than F critical, then you say that you reject the null hypothesis. F critical, you usually find that on a chart, an F, F distribution chart. And the p-value, you would use Excel to calculate the p-value, and we can see the formula right there, F dist, and over the quantity of the F statistic gives the p-value 0.0144, and remember that agreed with the p-value that we calculated with Excel. And we can see right here the rule is that if the p-value is less than alpha or the F statistic is greater than F critical, then we reject the null hypothesis as we're doing here. We see p-value is 0.014 and that's less than the 0.5 of alpha. And we see that we reject the null hypothesis. So if you'd like to be an Excel statistical master, take a look at the ExcelMasterSeries.com and check out this download right here, free graphing manual. Okay, thank you very much, and goodbye.